Hey, what's going on? Jeff Koga here, and I want to tell you a story about the candy bar hustler, all right? Now, the story, it all started um, when I used to work in uh, downtown Los Angeles. There's a place called Little Tokyo. I was doing insurance and financial services back then, and I would walk the streets of uh, downtown uh, trying to, like, sell insurance to, like, business owners and stuff like that, right? So... Um, I would walk down this particular street, it's called 2nd Street in Little Tokyo all the time, and there would be this little kid that would be standing on the corner. And I would walk down these streets and he would, he would like all the time just stand there, just with the, with the candy bar and won't say anything, right? He would just look at him, I look at him, he won't say anything, I just walk by. And everyone else would be doing that over and over, right? Now, till one day. Okay, because I, as a being a sales and marketing guy, I like to be pitched, I like to be sold, I like to be like, hey, you know what, please buy something. I was there, and I was walking by, minding my own business, and he goes, hey, 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 sir, 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 sir. And I'm just like, yeah. And then he has a little bit more oomph and energy than ever before, and I'm just like, what the heck? Okay, so I was like, what's up, man? And he goes, he goes, sir, I only have two candy bars in my box here. Can you please, please, buy this off of me so my boss so I can finish selling everything in this box that's what he said to me right and I look at him I said how much and he says well usually these things call five dollars a piece but since I only have two I'll give you buy one get one free and you can get both for five dollars please you're gonna be helping me out a lot and if you can do this uh, please please and I look, reached into my pocket, and you know, luckily enough, um, I had five dollars. So I give him the five dollars, and I get my—I believe uh, it was a Kit Kat and a Snicker bar or something like that, right? And I take that, and um, you know, I start walking away. Right now, as a sales and marketing guy, I heard that, and I was just like, man, this kid—he figured it out. Finally, approaching someone and pitching them, right? And I was like, dang, good for him. Okay. Now, what I didn't realize at that time right it didn't happen until I got to the end of the street and uh, you know when you have to cross the street you know you gotta wait because you push a button and the light goes on so I'm waiting there and I look to my right where I just passed and I saw the kid right with the empty candy box go to his backpack that was leaning against the wall on the street and reach in and get two more candy bars out and then put it into the box I was just like oh and then guess what he did he started doing the same thing, like I can hear him, right? Because I got pretty good ears, right? I can hear him, says, hey, hey, sir, 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 sir. I have two candy bars in my box. Please help me get rid of these. And would you like to buy these for off of me? Right, and he said that. And then the second guy bought the exact thing and bought it, right? Now, what the heck is the moral of this story about candy bar box and this kid that's selling, right? It's this, right? A lot of times when, when we're walking around this world or if you want to get into business or you're doing sales, right? We sometimes, because we're, we're so clear, close to the action, we think that one thing is the reason why that particular person or that company is successful, right? Like, like for example, right? Like if you looked at that kid just on that scenario of the story I told you how he sold me you're gonna be like wow it's because of his hustle his tenacity and being able to go ahead and ask for the business is that's why he made the sale right that's why he made the sale but the truth is it's not even about that the truth is what he has done with the psychology and using things like pre-framing right using scarcity using the moral side of saying please help me out Right, this kid because look he could have stayed there all the time because like before that right like I would see him every single day and he would have tons and tons of candy bars so somebody clearly taught him the game of that punchline and he's been, he was doing that and by the time I went to lunch and came back I don't know how many times he did that but I would have to rest I would have to guess that he sold a tons and tons of candy bar with probably a huge margin on it right so many times when we look at something right the kind of the finished product or that thing that happened we like to think that that's the reason why that that person is but in reality it's not and many many times it, it kind of boils down to that here and I'll end with this as I'm driving into the office okay as an investor right there was a time where from the outside world they would presume that many of the reasons 
why we would uh, be, it would be very easy for us to raise money and get deals for real estate deals was the sheer fact that uh, we did a lot of social media marketing, right? People would say that social media marketing, social media marketing. But in the truth is, it was not that. The truth was we were getting the deals and business from doing direct response marketing by getting in front of people the low-hanging fruits and having a well-crafted message and a well-crafted story. And by having these stories, that allowed us to be able to convert uh, a lot of the sales, okay? Because look, we can say it's how hard you work, how hard you work, and a lot of times right now, especially because it's the beginning of the year, people have these new year resolutions, and we're working hard, we're working hard towards our goal, we're uh, about two weeks in now, um, about a month in, then the, that magic wears off. But the truth is, you gotta be able to what? work smarter in my opinion. Yes, working hard is very important. If you can work smart and hard at the same time, great, right? But most of the time, people will lean on towards working harder without working smarter. And that's what I mean by you know going out and recognizing that. And a lot of that has to come with understanding market psychology, right? And, and for my education company and my training company, right, I get on the phones with a, a lot of my uh, buyers and students. Okay, now here's the reason why. Because I started looking at uh, the industry, right, on the quote unquote guru industry in the space of real estate. It's no different than what's going on, in my opinion, about the real estate industry currently right now. We've had a boom, right? Literally, we've had a boom in the market where the prices has gone up, things has gone up, right? So what happened is that we had an expansion expansion in terms of more people getting into the particular industry. We have over 1.2 million real estate agents, I believe currently right now, all right? We don't know an exact metrics of real estate investors, but if I have to be a betting man, uh, I guarantee you it has gone up significantly than it was in 2008 or 2009. All right. Simultaneously, so-called gurus and experts that are teaching how-to stuff has gone up too. Why? Because the industry has become a lot easier to sell uh, how-to products in the digital age. Right? It has become a lot easier. So it has gone up. Now, if you understand that of market cycles, because it's called the market for a reason, right? Because we have different opinions of stuff, right? If we did not have different opinions of stuff, it would not be a market. Would you agree? So if that's the case, what happens after an expansion phase in a marketplace is that it always comes out with the consolidation phase, meaning things consolidate. So for example, is something like Bitcoin, all right? Currently right now, we had an expansion phase of Bitcoin where it became very popular, almost got close to 20,000, and then now, boom, we're getting into a consolidation phase as it's hovering today, as I'm recording this, maybe around 11,000, 12,000, okay? Now I have a gut feeling it's gonna consolidate back down more even to eight to 9,000, and then maybe it'll go back up. But the point of the matter of all of this is that because of opinions, when we look at from the outside world, you've got to be able to make your own decision and understand, and you gotta put in the work to understand the market cycle, right? Because imagine if you wanted to be get into the candy business of selling candy, just like the story I told you about that kid that sold me the two candy bars, right? The price two for one deal, right? If you looked at that and you simply saw and been like, just the economic of that business, right? You would have been like, man, that kid probably bought that candy bar for a dollar and he flipped it to me for five dollars. He's making four dollar profits. That's a great business. All I have to do is sell 100 candy bars and I'll make four hundred dollars in uh, gross profit, right? And that's how sometimes people people think about it and it says, well, hey, but you know, that's best case scenario. But worst case scenario, all I got to do is sell 10 of those and I'll make forty dollars. And if I can do that in an hour, even better, right? not realizing that the magic sauce was what he did to me, which was remove all of the other candy bars, used kind of the morale clothes on me of saying, help me out, please. It's going for a good cause thing. And I said, you know what, screw it. I'm gonna help this kid out, right? And that's that's the reason why I bought, okay? And a lot of times when, when it comes to business or even marketing campaigns, people don't go into this stuff thinking that it's gonna fail. Otherwise, otherwise, why would we do it, right? We just don't. 
And you know, hey, people talk about like, hey, think positive and hey, great things that will happen to you. And look, look, trust me, I am a very, very positive person, okay? Um, but also at the same time, very pragmatic, right? And the world of marketing, you got to understand and the world of business, you gotta, you gotta be like, what if you're wrong? What if you're wrong? Because the more, more times you are wrong than you are right. And then the only thing that you have to do is that when you're right, you got to make sure that you milk it, right? It's the same concept as uh, uh, Peter, Peter Drucker said this. He's the kind of the godfather of business management. He says so many times, people will do what? Put their eggs in multiple baskets and hope that the egg will hatch. But Peter Drucker says the complete opposite. He says, what you want to do is you want to put all your eggs in one basket and watch the basket carefully. And I'm a firm believer it's so true in the in the world of what? Making money, in the world of running business, in the world of growing your business. So like, here's an opportunity of an investment, right? People are just like, Jeff, hey, what should I invest in? What should I invest in, okay? Now, legal disclaimer here, I am not giving advice on investment advice here, other than the fact that I'll tell you from core experience, right? Is that people will talk about the stock market and things like that, and what, what I tend to do is invest in stuff that people do not look at too much, okay? Like for example, Bitcoin, 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 people are talking about this, right? Now, if you're in the space of real estate, I've been saying this since last year, is to invest in an ETF are called NAIL. This particular ETF has gone up almost 300%. It is the best performing stock in terms of last year. It's the best performing one. Almost 300%, right? So you put in 10 grand, it'll turn into 30 grand. You put in a 50 grand, it'll turn into 150 grand. Okay? Pretty damn good, right? Put in 100 grand, it'll turn into the, uh, 300 grand, right? And it's based on a basket of what? stocks related to the real estate industry. So if you are bullish in the real estate business, why wouldn't you want to put some money into that? Now, if you're a bearer on it and you think that there's going to be a correction, then you'll be like, okay, maybe not, right? You might hedge it a little bit with something else. But if you are truly bullish on it, why wouldn't you put the money in there? Right? Other than the fear, other than the lack of understanding what's happening, right? So again, what we see from the outside on what's going on and what truly happens in the inside is dramatically different. And if you can be kind of that kid that sold me the candy box that was, you know, hey, learn from the what happened. And clearly he learned that pitch line and sinker from someone else. And if you can learn that and do that, that one thing that you learn how to do can magically, boom, change your business. You don't need multiple things, right? Because that kid that was selling candy, he could have done other stuff, right? Like recruit more kids to help him sell candy on all the blocks, right? Could he have done that? 100%. But is if it's pitch... Did not, was not down, right? The kids wouldn't have been able to sell. Now the fact that he has a pitch line and sinker, it's a lot easier for him to get other kids to go sell the candy bars, right? And not only that, but he can do it in a more consolidated time frame, right? So again, that's kind of the magical secret that I have for you on this. And hopefully you learned something. If you did, let me know in the comment box.